In this lesson, we'll be looking at Excel's data filtering options, which allow you to quickly create subsets of larger data sets to gather key information. We're roughly halfway through the course now, so it's also time to do a bit of housekeeping on the file. I'm going to show you a few formatting tools and techniques to improve its overall appearance. Now that our data is pretty much done, it's time to tidy up some of the other bits in the file. We don't need these tabs anymore down here, so we can click on Top 10 Movie Data 2017 and 2016. You see there I've clicked on them independently. If I hold down the control key, I can select them all at once, right click and click hide. We also need to set the title to something descriptive. So let's click into the text box here and change it to Top 10 Movie Data. It's also in my mind a bit big at the top. So if we scroll over the text and reduce it down using this down arrow uh, here, I'm also going to change its color. So we can do that as we did earlier by highlighting over it, opening this up, and you can pick from any of the colors in the palette, or you can get a bit more creative clicking on this more colors thing, going into custom in the little tab at the top, and then you can pick anything from this whole range of different colors, and even tweak it up a little bit by then picking from the scroll bar on the right hand side. Click OK. That to me is a little bit more subtle. Maybe that's a little bit too light, so I'll have a bit of a play around and get it to something that I want. Really personal choice, so you do whatever you want for you. I also don't like how the white background looks behind the Excel Goat logo, but because the text in the logo is purple, I'm limited on choices. I've got another version of the logo where the text is white, and that would allow me to play around with darker backgrounds. So let me change it in here. You can right click on any picture, click change picture, again, pick where you want to get it from, in this case, from a file, and I'm going to pick my main logo, which has white text. That now on a white background, the logo text disappears completely, but I'm going to change the background color to match the scroll bar on the side, and then that blends a lot better. While we're playing around with this picture, let me show you another way we can manipulate image sizes and text boxes and other objects in Excel. If you select it by left clicking on it, you'll see that this picture format uh, option appears in the top menu bar. Click on that, and then over to the right, we've got height and width. I can enter numbers in there to set them to specific heights and widths. And what Excel will do for pictures particularly is try to keep the aspect ratio. So if something's four wide and two high and you change it to two wide, it will set it to one high. That means the picture won't be distorted. Let me show you. So if I drop this width down, you can see that it's also reducing the height. I can then move it into position. Here's another little tip. I can do it with my mouse by clicking, holding and dragging, but I can also use my arrow keys to fine adjust it around and get it exactly where I want it. Click away and that looks a little bit more subtle in the top left corner. Those of you paying close attention will realize that the data isn't exactly as it looked in the sample file. That's because we'll be coming back later. I'll be showing you some other methods to even further improve the data and make it much simpler and quicker to use. For now though, the data is ready for some manipulation. So I'm gonna show you how to do some sorting and filtering. Click on the top left header in our data, which is called position, and then click data and filter. You'll notice that Excel has added little drop down arrows across our whole header bar. It's been smart again here because it's actually worked out what's part of our data and what isn't. So it knows how to spread them across the full data set. What do these little filter things actually do? If we click on the release year one, we can see at the bottom that Excel has pulled out all of the different options that are available in that column. So 2016, 2017, and 2018. It's also added select all. And by clicking that, if it's already ticked, it unselects or deselects all of the options that are in there. Equally, if I click it again, it selects all of the options. So let's deselect it, and then let's just pick 2018 and click OK. And you can see that it's filtered our whole data set to only include things that have 2018 in the release year column. Now it's at this point that I've realized that one of my headings is actually wrong. I've got genre here instead of studio. So I'm gonna change it in this heading. Now that was fairly simple to do and corrected a mistake that I've made earlier. However, imagine you'd done this across 20 years or across 52 weeks in a single year. You would then have to go into every individual tab and correct that heading if it was wrong. In this case, because we've got our data all in one place, we just change the heading once and it applies to everything. Hopefully just in that basic example of filtering, you're already starting to see the benefits of storing all of your data in a single structured table. We store it once only and then we filter it in different ways to produce different views of the data. If, for example, we wanted a report for each year, we could filter it accordingly to produce that. But equally, if we wanted a report for all years together, we simply take the filter off, dead simple, and no messing about with multiple worksheets. Anyway, let's get on with adding a second filter to another column. 
Excel will give you a really good indication to columns that are already filtered by showing you a little funnel icon inside the drop down of the filter icon. Uh, so we can see that release year is already filtered and we're now going to filter studio as well. And let's pick Walt Disney Pictures. So deselect all and then pick Walt Disney Pictures and click OK. We can now see that our data set is filtered to show 2018 release year films by Walt Disney. So again, we've used the same data set and filtered it to something specific without actually moving the data, going to different tabs or doing anything complicated like that. In the next lesson, we'll be doing some more advanced filtering before exploring Excel's ability to sort data alphabetically and numerically.